I'm excited about this opportunity to be here today. My first Big Ten media day. Um, I'm sure there's some people here out here in this audience that I will get a chance to meet and develop a relationship with. Looking forward to that. But let me get right to it. I'm excited about this opportunity. This is a, a dream come true for me to have a chance to come back to my alma mater, University of Michigan, one of the most prestigious universities there is in this country. Michigan is a beautiful place that helped me develop, become a student athlete. I got my degree at the University of Michigan, and I'm proud to call myself a Michigan man. Now I get an opportunity to coach at the University of Michigan and help develop some of the best world-class athletes to become a student athlete, to play at a high level, to represent an amazing university. Thank you, Coach. We will open the floor for questions. Brian Gillis, SB Nation. Coach, I'm sure you've followed Machine from afar over the years, but now that you've been around the team, now that you've seen them in the gym, what surprised you the most about this team? Well, I've had a chance to watch them from afar. Being an assistant coach at, the, uh, at Miami University, well, Miami Heat organization, and a chance to see a guy like Xavier Simpson, who I've watched in, uh, for many years, how he's developed as a player. Now having an opportunity to coach him, I see why he's been so special, because he's a, a great person, an excellent leader, and a hard worker. But then the list falls after Xavier. A guy like John Teske, another person who has improved a lot as a player. My goal is to help him get better as a player. Isaiah Livers, who's developing day by day. High character guys that are on our team, uh, it, it's a dream for a coach to have those guys in the trenches with you. Paul M. Banks, thesportsbank.net. As a graduate of Chicago Vocational and Chicago Public League, how important is it going to be for you to recruit to the city and the CPS, and will Chicago be an essential part of your recruiting strategy with the program going forward? Well, my walk has been special. Uh, growing up here in Chicago, this city, as we're here today, um, being a part of the Public League, was not only easy for me, but it was challenging at times. Uh, some would think that because I had so much success that it had an easy route, but no, it was not like that. I faced a lot of adversity. It helped me develop as a young man. Uh, been through a lot of wars with King and Simeon High School. It taught me how to compete at a high level. Chicago has amazing talent in this city, and I will continue to recruit not only here in Chicago, but in other parts of the country. Um, hey, Juwan, uh, Steve Hellwagon, 24-7 Sports. Uh, been around long enough to remember when you played, obviously, uh, there at, at the University of Michigan. I'm curious, as you made the transition from NBA player to the staff with the Miami Heat, uh, when did it dawn on you that you wanted to coach and eventually you wanted to be a head coach? When, when did those ideas start to really... Uh, foment in your mind to where you're in this position today? Well, it started early on when I was playing. My, my latter years of my career, like I would say back when I was playing for Portland before I signed with the Miami Heat. In 2009, as a, a player under Nate McMillan, uh, that was the time when I had conversations with Nate and Monty Williams asking them questions about what it takes to be a coach, uh, what it's like coaching in the NBA, I started to put my brain around, you know what? Before I was more interested in like the front office, but that bug, that coaching bug, that teaching bug became like what I wanted to do for my next walk. Um, the, signing with the Miami Heat, you know, getting to know the Heat culture, uh, working under uh, Eric Spostra, David Fisdale, Dan Craig, those guys were teaching me how to become and prepare myself as a head coach. Um, as I was assistant with the Heat, uh, those were the moments where I was preparing myself like, you know what, this is me. I'm embracing this opportunity. Um, I start preparing myself as a head coach. 
Eric Spolster started teaching me how and what to uh, and what to look for, how to prepare for as a coach, how to prepare with the game planning for opponents. All that information and data I started collecting, and that was you know, helping me prepare for this day moving forward. On your right, Corey. Juwan Jeff Goodman. Uh, curious to know your thoughts on the, the recent California law that was passed uh, where players are able to profit off their name and likeness. As, as a former player, now a coach, I feel like a lot of the coaches are kind of straddling the line on where they stand. Where do you stand? Well, Jeff, I don't know too much about it, to be honest with you. Uh, I've heard a little bit of, of some information that are out there. I haven't had a chance to really read about it. I've been more focused on our players, on practices, get, getting ready for the season, day-to-day um, -day stuff that I'm dealing with back at the University of Michigan, uh, whether it's you know, players' academics, practices, planning, recruiting. But I've heard a little bit about it. Unfortunately, I haven't read anything on it. So I can't really comment. Something I don't know about, I prefer not to comment about it. On your left here. Hey, Coach, Chris Hetty from the Omaha World Herald. What are the challenges uh, taking over a program that, that John Beeline uh, obviously put in early good position? Coach Beeline did an awesome job for this program. Uh, I don't know if you know this story or not, but when I was working for the Miami Heat, and I told you before earlier that I was preparing myself for a head coach for someday getting ready for if I ever had a chance to be a head coach, whether it was in the NBA or college, um, what and how I would want my team and how I want my team to look. So I used to, every summer I used to go and visit Coach Beeline. Um, he would pick my brain on defense, on post-defense. Um, there were times when we would have a session, a work, I call it a career workshop day, well, he'll have his staff, coaching staff out there, and you know we'll talk about basketball and developing and skill development. You know, from an offensive standpoint, I've always had a lot of respect for Beeline and his philosophy. There are times when I would ask Eric Spostra to reach out to Coach Beeline because I said, "Hey, this guy's interesting. You know, he's he's one of the best basketball minds out there." So now he takes a step and he makes a huge jump to the NBA and become the Cleveland Cavaliers head coach. Now, I'm sure a lot of people think like, you have a lot of pressure on you <laughs> to try to fill those shoes. All I can say is this, I'm not gonna try to be like Coach Beeline. He has his philosophy, his way of doing things. Um, I have my philosophy and I feel that works for our team moving forward, but I do respect the gentleman who was there before me. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNH High Sports Indiana. Uh, coach, the addition of Phil Martelli to your staff, how much have you leaned on his experience already and how much do you intend to kind of lean on his experience going forward? His name is the Godfather. <laughs> I think hiring Coach Martelli to let you know this, that A, I'm humble. B, that I respect guys who have been head coaches and have a ton of experience. Um, I would be a fool not to sit there and, you know, pick Coach Brain or um, use, use him. He, he's on the staff. Uh, he's a guy that I'm going to lean on a lot. And I think he has so much experience. In 24 years as head coach, 34 years total, that says a lot, that he knows a lot about college basketball. And that's why... And I'm very fortunate that I was able to get this Christmas gift early by hiring Coach Phil Martelli. Last question on the left, Coach. Wayne Viner, Turp Talk. Do you have to explain to your players and the guys that you're recruiting who the Fab Five is and what the <laughs> relationship is with Chris Weber, or do they, do they know? You know, that's a very good question. I haven't had a chance to even talk about the Fab Five. I think a lot of our guys do their homework. They're very smart. They know who the Fab Five is. They understand um, what I've done on my collegiate level. Uh, they, they've seen, uh, I think the majority of them have seen the uh, Fab Five documentary. Chris Weber, in my opinion, is a Hall of Famer, uh, not only on the collegiate level, but also on the NBA level. Uh, 
keep in mind, I recruited Chris Weber to come to University of Michigan. And at that time, people said, hey, how can two guys that play the same position coexist on the floor? But we had an amazing coach like Steve Fisher who figured it out. And we've had a lot of success and learned a lot from Coach Fisher. But Chris is a Michigan man. Thank you, Coach Howard. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day.